Let's talk about the bucket challenge for waterproof equipment. How you can test your waterproof equipment right after you buy it to make sure it actually works the way it's intended to work. What's up my biker friends and welcome back to another video. Let's talk about one of my favorite topics which is waterproof motorcycle gear and how you can test your motorcycle gear right after you buy it. Uh, this goes for gloves and boots, uh, not so much jackets and pants. And there's a reason why I'm doing this video because I've had a good and bad experience in riding in the rain for really long. There's actually a video up on this channel where I talk about the different pieces of equipment that I was wearing uh, throughout the longest rain ride that I've had on a motorcycle and what of the equipment worked and what didn't work and what you have to pay attention to if you're riding along for a very long time. So if you haven't seen it, uh, go and check it out. Uh, for those of you who have seen it, know that one of my favorite pieces of kit that I have did not work the way it was uh, intended to work. And that's the Alpine Stars Tech 7 Dry Star motorcycle boots. I done a review on those boots and I was really happy about the boots having a motocross style boot on the market. So a boot that offers motocross style protection for adventure riders that was also promised to be waterproof. Now it failed exactly on that waterproof promise and I hadn't really tested it. Uh, throughout the rain ride and I didn't really test it at home to see if it was really waterproof and that's something that I should have done and something that I'm going to tell you how to do when you buy your uh, motorcycle gear so you don't run into the same issue you know after wearing it a year or a year and a half and then you you see that it doesn't really work because it makes it so much harder to go back to the manufacturer and see if they can exchange or something like so um, without spoiling the whole video Alpine Stars came through and they sent me a new pair of boots and I'm going to take you through the process of how that worked for me. But before I do, um, I'm going to give you sort of the original video that I had, um, that I recorded right after that long rain ride and the, the disappointment that I had after uh, I took uh, these boots off. So here's the clip. Let's talk about the Alpine Stars Tech 7 Dry Star Edition. I know I did a video back then when I bought them and I was really psyched about having a boot that combines the uh, protection of an Enduro style boot with uh, waterproofness. And uh, I thought Alpine Stars were the first manufacturer that actually had such level of protection and it would include waterproofness uh, for adventure style riding. Well, today I had the longest day in riding in the rain. Out of the seven hours I was riding six hours in rain, in normal rain, in heavy rain, and then really heavy rain in the end. So this was definitely one of the heaviest rain days I've ever had in riding motorcycles. So this was the true test for the Alpine Stars Tech 7 Dry Star Edition with a proper rain ride and they completely failed. So uh, looking at this boot, um, this is uh, the Tech 7 and it looks like a normal Tech 7. The only difference is that it has the Dry Star membrane in it. So if you sort of open it up, um, you can see that there is this um, sort of yeah, gator here that comes all the way up to here that has the membrane in it. Very similar to the Alpine Stars Toucan that I had before. So a similar design. But when you look at the boot, um, a lot of it is um, it's plastic. It's plastic all around. It's plastic at the toe, um, all around the heel section. So there isn't really much exposed material that could really leak water, but it did. So if you look a bit closer, you see this, um, this material here is still pretty wet. I was uh, blow drying the um, the boots um, with the blow dryer just to get them dry again because it was soaking wet from the inside. So this is where all the water penetrated through the boot. Now I'm wearing Gore-Tex pants that go all the way down to here, adventure boots over the boot style pants that I'm wearing. So none of the rain really came from the top or if you have um, um, pants that go into the boots, that's not what I'm wearing. So nothing came into the top um, and the pants are still pretty dry. So all the stuff must have come through the bottom section if it isn't enough to actually go over the boot and in. So this is the part where the membrane should protect the boot from water getting in and it didn't. It was really soaking wet. As you can see I was quite frustrated uh, with the boots. They didn't really work the way were intended to work and uh, I had to deal with it on the tour. This happened a few more times where I was riding in the rain and I had to blow dry the boots uh, to get them dry again. You know, if you're staying in hotels and something and they have a blow dryer there, it's not the end of the world to do it. But of course, it's, a, it's another 
hassle uh, but the last thing you want to do is take your boots and put your boots on and then have them completely soaking wet with uh, with dry socks it just is horrible so i made sure that the boots are dry and uh, i could ride with it and and that was fine and i reached out to alpine stars the manufacturer first and i didn't really hear from them i, I had some responses right away uh, but then the communication kind of went dead so i approached the dealer and actually went to the dealers really close to berlin i bought it online but i went to the place because it is so close if i can i still like buying clothes um from from a dealership and trying stuff on i, I didn't try them on but i know they were close so i actually went there in person and i asked if they could help me with contacting the manufacturer and they did they came through i think with a, within a couple of weeks they called me back in and they gave me a completely new pair of boots after i had worn these for just over a year which was great and then shortly after alpine stars also contacted me and said they would replace the boots and they were sorry uh, for how the boots were performing so that is great and that's that's excellent customer um service i think that's that's awesome you know something like this happens it's annoying enough as it is but when you see manufacturers coming through and then you know replace the equipment which you know it was a year old so they could have given me a discount at another piece of kit but they sent me a new pair of boots which is awesome thank you alpine stars that, that was really awesome and I'm, I'm really excited about now having these boots and hopefully they're gonna last a bit longer especially with the waterproofness because i still intend to go to norway and i'm expecting a lot of rain there so that'll be the second test hopefully that's gonna work now in order for you guys to avoid not knowing if your stuff is waterproof or not there's a really simple way of testing that out right after you purchase equipment and uh, I'm going to show you really quick what I did now with the Alpine boots, the, the new set they sent to me in which I did with my old Alpine Toucan boots right after I bought them. And that's the same process I went through with some of the gloves that I bought that are supposed to be waterproof. That's a simple way of testing it. And what you do is you take a bucket and fill it up with water and then you submerge the equipment, the gear for five to ten minutes. That's all it needs. Five to ten minutes of the water and see if water leaks. Now, for those of you guys say, well, this is not really the real world scenario because now you have all that water in there and there's water pressure pushing on the membrane and squeezing the water in and yes that's exactly the point those membranes are usually not the problem even if it's not a Gore-Tex membrane the membranes tend to be waterproof they also will send a certain level of water pressure that's usually not the issue if you want to see that actually there's a good video from Ryan F9 on the Fortnite channel on the waterproofness and the performance of different membranes he tested them all out it's pretty cool and interesting to see so you see the membrane isn't really the problem the problem of course on the seams so if you have a boot or a glove uh, it's not one piece of membrane it's a couple of pieces at least and they are sort of sort of glued together at the seams so if these uh, boots or gloves they leak they leak at the seams and that's what you're trying to test when you submerge the glove or your boot in the water and it takes a little while for the water to actually hit the membrane because there's obviously an upper material depending on if it's a boot or a glove and it takes a while for the water to get through it there's usually a, uh, a durable water repellent on there a dwr coating it takes a while to get through it and depending on how thick the material is of the boot and glove it takes a while for the water to come through before it actually hits the membrane uh, it doesn't take that long usually the first five minutes will expose any any weaknesses of the material uh, if you want to be in the safe size you know do it for 10 minutes and if it's good for 10 minutes there's a good chance it's going to stay waterproof for a long time especially a long rain ride where obviously i don't have water pressure on the boot or the glass so that's what i did with the new pair of alpine boots and uh, i had them in there for just just about 10 minutes and both sides were bone dry no problem at all um, that gives me a lot of hope that that boot is going to maintain its waterproofness through its lifetime. Now, you can't really expect it to be waterproof for life. That's something that Gore-Tex promises. So what Gore-Tex does in order to ensure that quality uh, insurance in the process, they actually look at the final product and I think they have to pass some, I don't know, Gore-Tex accreditation and they're looking at how it's been manufactured. That is also the reason why you pay that premium for Gore-Tex products. It's not the membrane that's expensive, but it's the entire QA uh, that you do that uh, jacks up the price. Um, but if you have Gore-Tex equipment, the chances are it's going to last longer than maybe any other membrane. Anyway, um, the dry star membrane um, is not a bad membrane. And if, if this works, if it was manufactured well, there's a good chance uh, that equipment's gonna last with regards to waterproofness. 
I also know people that have used this boot in the second season now and they haven't had any issues with waterproofness so I know there are boots out there that um, that will keep the water out which is great so guys I hope that was helpful for you if you are you know, just in the market of buying new gear for uh, the 2022 season and it's waterproof it's a quick check to do and then if it doesn't work you can always send it back it's much easier to send it back when it's brand new than if you've used it for a year so I hope this is helpful to you if you have any questions about this or comments or you want to discuss the topic do that in the comment section guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video until then ride safe and stay dry <laughs>